guys, welcome to our section of probability. In this video, we're going to learn non-mutually exclusive events. Also, don't forget to watch the other part, which is part one. And in that video, we cover mutually exclusive or disjoint events. Let's start. First of all, what is a non-mutually exclusive event? Well, when you have two events that can happen at the same time, they're actually non-mutually exclusive. The formula is going to be B A or B, or you can read it like this. The probability of A or B happening is equals to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability A and B happening at the same time. The key word is going to be or. So you can see here that both events can happen at the same time. That is why we need to subtract that um, this area because if not we're going to be double counting the events but we're going to do a lot of exercises so you can understand it now let's remember the basics of probability remember probability can never be negative and it goes from 0 to 100 also the probability of an event is the number of observations divided by the number of outcomes and also the probability of an event not happening is 1 minus the probability of the event happening all right, let's go to the fun part, the problems. What is the probability of rolling a die and getting an even number or a number greater than 2? Okay, first of all, let's find out the outcomes and let's do the formula. Remember, when you roll a die, you can get a 1, a 2, 3, 4, 5, or a 6. Now, we need to figure out the probability that is even or greater than 2. Okay, probability of even. Well, even I have 2, 4, and 6. That is 3 out of 6. The probability that is greater than 2 is going to be all the numbers greater than 2. 1, 2, 3, 4. So, 4 over 6. Finally, the probability that is even and greater than 2. Remember, this happens at the same time. So, that's going to be 4 and 6. I do not include the 2 because it tells me that it's greater than. Awesome. That is 2 over 6. As you can see here, I did not simplify my fractions because I want to keep the same denominator. If not, it's going to become a mess. So I just do the same. 3 plus 4, which is 7. 7 minus 2 is equal to 5. I keep the same denominator and bingo, I got my answer. Awesome. Another one. Now, sometimes they can give you problems like this. Let's say that you have, um, you are at a party, a really cool party, and you have 41 people that are going to be females and males, and all of these people are actually um, sport fans. So we're going to have baseball, soccer, and tennis. Let's understand how to read this chart. In total, we're going to have 22 females. In total, we're going to have... 19 males, that gives me a total of 41 people, then we're going to have 7 people that like basketball, I'm sorry, basketball, no, baseball, <laughs> soccer, we have 16, and tennis, we have 18, I'm used to the Spanish saying of baseball, but um, it's actually the correct way how it's written, what is the probability of finding a female, well, let's see, females, we're going to have 22 out of 41. That's how easy it's going to be. Let's do another one. What is the probability of finding a soccer fan? Well, as you can see here, I'm going to have 16 in total, 6 females and 10 males. So the probability of finding a soccer fan is 16 out of 41. All right. What is the probability of finding a female that likes tennis? Well, this is a non-mutual exclusive event because I can have a female that likes tennis at the same time. Well, look, females is all this, tennis is all this. I just find the intersection, which is 12 out of 41. Perfect. What is the probability of finding a male that likes baseball? Okay, so a male is all of this. Baseball is only this one, so 3 out of 41. Now, let's start with the fun part. What is the probability of finding a male or a tennis fan? Remember, 
we have the keyword, which is or. We know that this is a no mutual exclusive because I can have a male and a tennis fan at the same time. Well, let's remember the formula. The probability of finding a male or a tennis fan is the following. First of all, the probability of a man plus, oops, plus probability of a tennis fan minus the probability of a male and a tennis fan at the same time. Let's do it. Remember, the male is going to be what? 19 out of 41. The tennis fan is going to be what? 18 out of 41. Finally, we need to subtract the probability of being a male and a tennis fan at the same time. Well, look at your chart. Male tennis, which is 6 over 41. Then I do 19 plus 18 minus 6 is equals to 31 over 41. Awesome. Now, let's talk about conditional probability. This is the probability of an event A happening given that B has happened. Let's start. All right. For example, what is the probability of finding a tennis fan given that it's a female? Now, here I have a condition. They are telling me that I should only look at the females. Well, remember, you only have 22 females. So, the probability of finding a tennis fan given that it's a female, look at the notation, you have a line, is going to be equals to 12 out of 22. I'm not using 41 because remember, they are telling me that the, I only need to look to the females. 12 over 22 is equals to, remember, I need to slash this and make it on the lowest term, which is 6 over 11. Let's do another one. What is the probability of finding a soccer fan given that it's a male? Again, it's conditional. I do not look at the 41. I look only at the males. So, that's going to be equals to 10 out of 19. And that's all. Please don't forget to watch our other videos. And also, thanks so much for learning.